Hi, if you want to handle authentication in TRPC, chances are you're gonna use JSON Web Tokens. Now you might also use something like NextAuth, but um, in a very common use case you're gonna use JSON Web Tokens. And when you have JSON Web Tokens, the normal architecture that you probably want to have is you got access tokens, which you store in memory on the client, and then also you've got refresh tokens, and only those are actually stored in cookies, and then the access key is just kept in memory. Now, the access key you also have to include in your requests, and you do that through custom headers. And in TRPC, setting those headers is not exactly difficult, but it's not exactly intuitive either, because the documentation kind of lacks at this point, and I had to figure this out myself, and so I share how I set my headers um, to the access key so that with every request instead of sending along a cookie we're sending along the proper header um, that authenticates our request. So let's dive right in and take a look at how to have custom headers in TRPC that we can then use to authenticate each and every API request. Okay so here's the deal you want to implement header authentication um, in your app. Now for your orientation this is a project where TRPC is already set up and this is how the front end looks. Yes it's bad uh, I know so we have a button that says very secure action and we but we have a button that says um, log in. Now, when we click the very secure action, we can just do that without any um, checking that we are allowed to do that. And we can also click the login, which doesn't do much yet. Now the login doesn't do much because we have to find an on click, but I've commented that out just for a second. Um, we want to implement that. So how do we go about the login first? Because that's the first step in this whole um, authentication system. What you would do normally in an application is first compare the password to the hashed one you've got in the database. So for example, um, when, when logging in or when signing up, you get the password encrypted um, or hash it with bcrypt, for example, then store that in the database because you never store passwords as, as real text and then compare those with a package like bcrypt then, if the passwords match, you generate a refresh in an access token so that then you can send back the refresh token as a cookie, whereas you store the access token in memory, which is nothing more than a constant in JavaScript. And the access token is the case we're going to take a look at. So we're getting the access token to store in memory and then sending the refresh token back as a cookie, which we're going to neglect for now. So the your access token you can see right here is the one that we want to pass back to the client. Now it will be received um, right here and we can get rid of this mutation for a second. So we can also comment um, this on click out. Um, so the very secure action won't work for a second. Now if we actually log in, right, we've get, we, we're going to get back the access token and with the login we're going to have something called on success that will receive um, the data as the first argument. So we can say data and then this doesn't look right yet. Now it does. Um, so the data is a string because we are passing back a string right here, your access token. We could also, what would be semantically a bit easier to read would be access token and then the same thing. So essentially passing back an object, which means that right here um, on the on success, we can just destructure the access token. Um, or if we had the data, we could say const access token is equal to data. Whatever approach you choose, I think this is semantically a bit easier to read. And this is how we're going to store the access token um, in memory or in the header for whenever we send requests. So um, let's log it out for now. Log out the access token. And I think this example is so trivial that um, actually, yeah, let's, let's still take a look at it. Um, the server is started. Okay. So whenever we click the login button, and reload the page. Whenever we click the login button, nothing happens because I also need to unlock this action right here. Let's click it again. As we can see, um, the answer comes back, but it comes back as undefined, probably because we need to save this as well. And now when we click the login button, the text that comes back right here is your access token. And that is the access token that we want to store in memory or in the headers for whenever we send requests. Now, how do we get this into the headers? You might wonder, and um, let's find out. So with the actual, or with the current TRPC documentation, um, by the way, this should be for 10, there we go. And then let's go to header, create custom header. There we go, this is the TRPC documentation. We create the headers right here in the uh, util slash TRPC file. 
And essentially, the header that we're sending is this token right here. So that should be equivalent to the access token that we are sending back on the server and then receiving on the client. Um, the thing is though, if you follow the documentation, let's try that. So um, let's export um, this token right here, wherever we set the headers, which will be in this document right here. So as you can see, the headers will be set in the HTTP batch link. We can get rid of a lot of this stuff. Um, this is really um, clogging up the screen. Uh, let's get rid of a lot of this, just so you'll have an easier time um, viewing all this information. We don't need that. And we can literally just say um, localhost, uh, oops, localhost 3000 instead of all of this. Uh, so it'll be way easier for you to read. Let's just say, um, do it like that. And 3000. Okay, and that should work just fine. Um, now, to define the header, we can do that right here in the batch link. So we can see headers, and then that is gonna be, um, you know, here we can set our header. So let's say, authorization is gonna be hello world and why is that doing something weird because we also need to return an object and um, where that goes into like this um, and there we go this is gonna be our authorization header and whenever we make a request now let's see what happens um, so let's restart the page here um, go to our network tab after we have made the request uh, 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 and uh, you know what, let's just do that again. Let's clear that, log in, and there we go. If I zoom out just a little bit, we can see the request headers and the author authorization header that we've just set um, with hello world as the text. However, this authorization header, we want to set dynamically, right? We do not want to just put a string here. We want to put the value that we get back from um, from our API route. Now to do that, um, the way TRPC suggests we do it is by uh, putting the token right here after declaring it up here and then also exporting that. So we can just say token, that's gonna be undefined, like nothing by default, just an empty string or undefined. And then in the mutation, we're gonna set the token. Um, however, as you'll see here in a second, whenever we get the access token back from our uh, API route, and just paste this. Um, first, it says cannot find name token, obviously, because it, it can't know where that's coming from, and we can import that. However, after importing, we can see the token that we're importing is not used. And that is weird because we just imported it because we need it, right? Token is declared, but its value is never read. It should be read right here, right? But if we hover over this, it says cannot assign the token because it is an import. So the documentation doesn't really work well. It should work like this. We define the token and then that's the header. And whenever we change that in the on success handler of our login screen, then this token will be changed accordingly. However, that doesn't really work. And the way to bypass that is by defining a setter. So we can say export cons set token, which receives a new token. Um, that's how I did it, at least as the um, argument, which is gonna be of type string like that. And then uh, afterwards we can say token is equal to a new token, as easy as that. And therefore we don't have to export this. We can just leave it as a string and instead of importing the token right here, we can import the set token. And then instead of doing this uh, mutation right here, we can say set token to the access token, like that. And there we go, we can save that. and. Just for um, convention's sake, we're going to say bearer and then the um, token. And now, whenever we perform an action, let's clear the console, let's click login. Let's take a look at this right here. So we can say the, we can see the request headers, the authorization, the bearer is undefined because we are not uh, authorized. However, when we do another request, let's make a request to the and that uh, doesn't work because I also need to enable this mutation and the on-click handler. So let's perform another um, action. Let's log in first where the um, authorization header is undefined. And now let's perform a very secure action. And as you can see right now, um, the request headers, when we go to authorization, we can see bearer and then your access token. Whereas in this one, it was still undefined, remember? So we have dynamically changed the header, the authorization header. We could set this to whatever we want. We could set whatever header we wanted. This is totally up to us. Um, just by convention, this is bearer and then your access token. So we can dynamically 
um, change the header. And what that allows us to do is then go into our next into our TRPC middleware, get the token, and then authorize the user by doing that. So we can say const token, and I've prepared that on my left side here. Um, first off, we need the request. So const request is equal to um, context. We can just destructure that because we've included it um, up here. We can get rid of all of this stuff, by the way. Um, so we need access to the request, and then the token is equal to the request dot headers. That's where we get the headers from dot authorization and then if that exists we're going to split that at the um, space bar and then we want the first item in that array because as you remember the token is like a bearer or the authorization header is like bearer and then your key right here we're splitting it at the space bar and then getting the token right here to check if it's valid um, now this is where you would implement some error handling like if there is no token, then we're gonna throw a new TRPC error that says something along the lines of code unauthorized. And that's how I usually do it. You can handle the errors however you want. Um, let's just assume that this token is valid, or let's just actually say, um, uh, uh, let's say token valid. Obviously, this is where you you would go into your auth into your um, auth and verify this is a real uh, JWT token that was signed. Um, however, let's just assume it is. So token valid is true if token is equal to your, what what did we call it? Let's check on the, uh, we call it your access token. So let's call it that right here. So if the token is equal to your access token, then the const token valid will be true. If it's not, we're unauthorized. And let's just pretend this is checking if the JWT is actually signed by or secret. And if it is, then we're going to return next. Um, so, and let's purposefully implement something that won't work. So if it's A, your access token, which won't work, remember, so we can log in and then we shouldn't be able to perform this action, which we are not. So 401 unauthorized is the status code. Um, we're not getting back anything. As you can see, the response unauthorized. Um, and also in the console, we get the TRPC error unauthorized because whatever we're passing as the header um, is not A, your access token, but instead it is uh, uh, um, it is your access token. And that's what we're checking for. So if we remove the A and made this right again after we log in, and now we can also perform the very secure action because the header we're passing for the authorization is just what we expect right here or would be a signed JWT in your real application. That's all I want to show you. That's how I handle um, dynamic headers in TRPC for JWT authentication. I hope it helped you. Um, I'm going to see you in the next video. Have a good one and bye bye.